You finally started Final Fantasy XIV, hit the character creation screen with the enthusiasm of a cat screaming for food at 5am, and you embark on the arduous decision of choosing a race and chiseling the appearance of an ascended angel with only the granite of your mind as the sole material for the concept of perfection. And once your vision has been realised and you choose a birthday and a guardian, and glorious immortal remembrances within grasp, you're asked to choose a class and a city-state. Ignore the city-state, you can see the whole world at any time and at your convenience while going through the opening quest of the main story quest. But what about the class and what the hell do you choose? And what in the grey hair of Odin's beard is a flaming gladiator? How does this impact your gameplay? How will this set you up for adventure? And what role does a gladiator even fill with a single-handed sword? Don't worry about it, none of it matters and none of the choices are actual classes or jobs as they are known once you get into the swing of things. You see, fateful newcomer, your character can play as everything and anything unrestricted, from tanking to healing to DPS, from cracking open mineral deposits for that delicious mining resource to fishing for the rarest Denzians of the ocean. Everything. You can do everything. So. What does that mean for choosing a class? Nothing, it's just something for you to start with and try out, as you can't realistically start out as a complete jobless blank slate. Now I should mention one thing, sure this choice doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, but for the first few hours, this choice will shape your understanding and enjoyment of Final Fantasy XIV as a whole, as you'll be learning the overall game and its mechanics. So I'm now here to help you out with this choice. Welcome to the video, I'm Dying Legacy and you want help choosing your first class? First things first. What's the difference between a Disciple of War and a Disciple of Magic? Pretty easy to explain actually and kinda self-explanatory. Disciple of War jobs use physical attacks and techniques such as crushing skulls with huge axes, pummeling enemies to mush with your fists and notching perfectly aimed arrows, while Disciples of Magic use magic. Stitching your allies wounds together or melting everything in the vicinity with fire. Have I your sadistic tendencies peaked? Good. But what about the job choices themselves? The hell are you even choosing? Well, the choice you make will get a form of promotion at level 30. For example, leveling Gladiator to level 30 will unlock Paladin, which is how every job you choose in the character select screen works. Every other unlockable job from later expansions, from Heaven's War to Endwalker, such as Dark Knight or Samurai, don't work like this. You pick up the job and you just play. Only the jobs from A Realm of Born require you leveling up to level 30 to unlock the real job, and they are all found on the character creation screen with the exception of the ninja job, which is unlocked by leveling Rogue to level 30. You can't choose Rogue when creating a character, instead completing the level 10 class quest on any other class first and heading to Limsa Lominza and picking up the quest My First Daggers. But back at the character creation screen, in the Disciples of War category, you have a choice of Gladiator, Pugilist, Marauder, Lancer and Archer. So let's explain them all, and we'll go over the Disciples of Magic as well after, and hopefully help you decide on what class you want to play, give you a moment of peace and tranquility with your choice, before the ever impending mental breakdown you'll have when you realise you can play everything and have to decide on the fly what you actually enjoy and what looks cool, before you spend your days fishing to avoid having to make a decision altogether. So let's begin with Gladiator. Gladiator is a tank, wielding a sword and shield, so later down the line you'll be sacrificing your mental and physical health for everybody else's lack of responsibility. Once you reach level 30, you'll unlock the Paladin job for holy tanking retribution. I'm not going to go over the level 30 jobs as I have done that in my 6 easy steps videos for tank, DPS and healing. My first Final Fantasy guides too, so uh, progress. Next up is the Pugilist, self-explanatory, you punch things with really hardy gloves. Your melee DPS and level 30 you'll unlock the Monk and the ability to kick things. The Marauder wields a huge girthy axe for crushing skulls. And not a DPS role, it's a tank, because you only need pure rage to survive any harm. And at level 30 you'll unlock the warrior job, which uses rage on a professional level to soak as much damage as possible. The lancer class uses spears and lances to stab things at range. Wrong, it dashes headfirst into the fray to directly ask enemies if size matters. Lancer is a melee DPS that at level 30 unlocks the dragoon job, for when you want to jump really far and fast to ask a lot of enemy their size preference. Our last Disciple of War choice is the Archer. This is also self-explanatory, you have a bow and arrow and pew pew from a distance as a ranged DPS class, and at level 30 they decide to take a class in musical theatre to increase their sex appeal and unlock the bard class, so you can shoot things to death and then sing them to the afterlife, or add insult to injury if they haven't quite kicked the bucket yet. Next up is the Disciple of Magic category, here you will find the Conjurer, ever in touch with nature and capable of throwing rocks and slashing with wind. Healer. This is a healer the most healiest healer of them all, and at level 30 unlocks the white mage job, which is even healier, and slightly holier, but above all else, a lot more healier. We also have a choice of the Thaumaturge class, which burns things. 
zaps things, freezes things, and then burns them again, until satisfied nothing within a 100 km radius has not been reduced to ash and there are no witnesses. This is a ranged magical DPS class that at level 30 unlocks the Black Mage class, and decides melting wasn't enough and now decided vaporizing enemies down to the molecular level is the way to go. And finally the Arcanist class, that uses a wide range of magical skills and abilities to decimate foes, heal allies, cuddle plush toys, and have existential crises. It's a ranged magical DPS, until you reach level 30 and unlock the Summoner class, that specs into summoning gods and eradicating life, and also unlock the Scholar class, that decided it prefers the pursuit of knowledge, got itself a medical degree, and really got into Tinkerbell from Peter Pan, to an obsessive level, knock before you enter. The Summoner is a ranged magical DPS, while the Scholar is a healer, and during the current expansion Endwalker, these two classes level simultaneously. Doesn't matter which one you're playing, they both level. You can level one of these classes to 90 without ever touching the other, if only Scholar took that advice to heart. While going over the soul-finding decision of which class suits best, you'll notice they all have a starting city. One of three, in fact. Limsa Lominza, Ulda, and also Gridania. Where the job actually starts has no bearing on anything except what the opening few quests of the main storyline contains and are going to be. Your home city and the factions later down the line are all up to you and are not determined by where you start. So my advice, choose what looks really cool and what fits the role you want to try out. And at level 10, you'll unlock the ability to do a short quest for each other class and job, to unlock them and add them to your repertoire and use when and how you feel. Bear in mind, each job levels independently, and you'll have to play them from level 1 to level 90. The Scholar and Summoner count as one job, and you can level either to level both. The jobs you can acquire from the expansion start at higher levels, and they require you to reach that same level on any other job as well to unlock them. You will need to purchase and own Shadowbringers and Endwalker to unlock their respective jobs though. Heaven's Ward and Stormblood count as free trials at this moment in time, so everything from there is fair game. This could change in the future, however, if they decide to add Shadowbringers bringers to the trial, but I don't see that happening for quite a bit. Probably another expansion or two down the line. So this covers all the jobs you can start out with. The rest and how you play is all up to you, so go out there and make us all proud by buying a story and level skip and having no idea what's going on as chaos engulfs you and everyone around you. Thanks for watching. I'm Dying Legacy. You have hopefully chosen a class by this stage and now have free hands to like and subscribe, as well as needing a moment to relax. In which case, you can find me over on Twitch, link on the screen and in the description, and I'll help mellow out your anxiety over the tough decision you just made by letting you sit through and listen as I face the same existential crisis in every MMO I can find. Have a good one, guys. Take care of yourselves and keep being awesome.